Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. It's time for Craig Smokes Off the Radar. Brought to you by Pickup Outfitters. Since 1997, we've been outfitting trucks, SUVs, and vans at 220 Lake Air Drive or createacommotion.com. All right, welcome back into Sikkim 365 Radio. Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke. Time for Off the Radar, a little break in the show on Tuesdays and Thursdays where we go over some of the non-major college football or non you know, major NFL type of headlines or those having to do with a lot of the stuff locally that we pass along. I want to start off today with a sad passing in college football. Sam Cunningham, yep. former Southern Cal and NFL running back, uh, passed away at 71 years old, according to USC. Uh, Sam Bam Cunningham, he was uh, somebody who uh, played a huge role in the integration uh, of in college football. As a freshman in 1970, he was one of three black starters in the uh, USC backfield, along with, fellow, or along with quarterback Jimmy Jones and running back Clarence Davis. Ran for 135 yards and two touchdowns in a 42-20 win over Alabama in his debut at the time. Alabama and Bear Bryant had not yet integrated, and his performance was one of the keys to, you know, eventually Bear Bryant opening up his eyes and Alabama itself opening up and, and moving towards uh, the same uh, ways of, of, uh, of life. So uh, credited for, for playing a huge role in that he passed away today at age 71. Slam, uh, Sam Bam Cunningham, the four touchdown game against the Rose Bowl. I remember that to this day. I can't tell you, you who scored four. Yes, I do. I can't tell you who scored touchdowns in the Rose Bowl last year. Did they even have one? They didn't. It was in Arlington. Yeah, the right? Rose Bowl was in Arlington. But, uh, yeah, no, he's one of the – you hear about Marcus Allen, uh, well, Charles White, obviously O.J. Simpson, Reggie Bush, among others. He wasn't that, like, level. Those guys were Heisman Trophy winners or, you know, elite. But he was very – I think he might have played with the Patriots. I could be wrong in the NFL, but he was, yeah – I hated to see that. that. That brings back memories for me. That's my childhood. Yeah, he was uh, first uh, the following year after Alabama lost to them, and, and USC had you know had him and, and the other two that I mentioned. Uh, the very next year, uh, Wilbur Jackson, running back, became the first uh, black player in Alabama history. So he made some history, led to some history. Obviously, was a great player as well. And one of the uh, big quotes that's been flying around, and when you got a quote like this, you know, after your passing, you know, you did something right in life. Life, but uh, Jerry Claiborne uh, on Cunningham did more to integrate Alabama in 60 minutes than Martin Luther King did in 20 years. I mean, what, what a quote that is. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's but, also the brother of Randall Cunningham. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what's, what's funny about that when it comes to integration or like big things happening? Sometimes it's just a little thing that makes people little go, spark. little go, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I could, you mean I have more people to recruit from? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, oh, that's better. Yes, nice. Oh, hey, what do you know? Nice yeah. to have options. So, yeah, yeah rest in well, peace. Or this, let's be honest. Oh, damn, they're beating us with them. And I mean that, and not anything, but we we need to start recruiting certain type players that we haven't been. Well, I mean, Bear Bryant us. definitely saw what happened and said, we have to recruit black yeah, players. No I think that's obvious. Yeah. yeah. So, whether it was, uh, you know, the most honest, like, opening up of the heart or it was motivated by wins and losses or whatever like at least it led to that i think that's the, the big picture point is that it did lead to people expanding and opening up their horizons whether personally that was still their choices or not but you know uh so yeah uh was a a key figure in the integration in college football uh, rest in peace to sam bam cunningham a, a usc legend uh, this is a weird story and, uh, you know you might have mentioned this in the headlines but i don't think you did but uh uconn coach randy etzel stepping down immediately he had announced after what was it, last weekend's loss that he was going to close out at the end of the season you know leave the UConn football program but they've now started 0-2 and, and he's nixing the whole I'm going to finish the season thing six and 32 or six and 28 something like that he had six wins whatever it is in his time uh, back his second go around with UConn mm -hmm. and I think they just said like what's the difference yeah I mean what is the difference they lost 45 to nothing to Fresno State and then they lost to Holy Cross so that was, di I mean, you know, he had to have lost that first game and thought, oh, we'll beat Holy Cross. And then you lose that game, and uh, yeah, that's enough. So Randy Etzel out immediately. That was uh, put out there yesterday. Do you guys know what the most popular name in fantasy football in some circles is this year? No. Well, for Yahoo Fantasy, the top 
nickname for fantasy teams is now Bishop Sycamore. Ah! That has yeah. uh, climbed the rankings over the last few weeks. God. Uh, last Thursday, it was the 14th most popular name. Over the weekend, it jumped up to fifth, and today it slid into first place. Over 10,000 Yahoo users well, have Bishop Sycamore as their team well, name. Most people had their drafts over the weekend, so... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so it jumped up a little bit. Run CMC. Of course, Christian McCaffrey is the, the second most. Uh, but Bishop Sycamore is, like, by and large, like the most popular right. name on there. And uh, they, that story's not done. Uh, their coach over the weekend uh, made some comments that were very interesting, and he basically said that uh, they're not a real football – or they're not a school. <laughs> like, he basically just said – Let's that, play high school football, but yeah. we really aren't a high school. Yeah. Yeah, he basically said that they're not a real high school in terms of uh, how we think of it. And uh, I'm trying to find his exact quote. I can't find it now all of a sudden. But uh, – See, we're not a, high, we're not a real we high school – but we are a high school, a post-school or uh, academy. Yeah, he said we do not offer curriculum. We are a we do not offer curriculum. We are not a school. Yeah. Was an exact quote of his. Uh, that's not what Bishop Sycamore is, and I think that's what the bis biggest misconception about us was, and that was our fault because that was a mistake on paperwork. Yeah. So how do they? I mean, legally play? I mean, I guess they're not. They're trying to play a national schedule. So people can play whoever they want. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Johnny Tusa many times has had a team from Mexico come up here that yeah. uh, I think some of the kids are like 19 years they old. They come over here and they get their bus whooped. And, yeah. yeah, so you can do it. It doesn't count, you know, as far as the, the playoffs go, but it's a, you know, it's a tune-up for your team and whatnot. So I don't know why you'd want to play a team like Bishop Sycamore, though. I mean, like what benefit does it give your team at all? You know, in the non in the non district, especially, you know, the point for most high schools and not just in Texas, but around the country is let's see how good we are. Yeah. So Tyron Jackson, who is a new head coach, gave that that beauty of a quote. Uh, he further backed it up. Uh, apparently, they are identified as a non charter, non tax supported school. But as has been thrown out there, they don't have a building. They don't have like an address. They don't have anything that would indicate that they're a school other than this football team, basically. Uh, and he also went on to call them the new head coach, Tyron Jackson. They're not a school. They are post grad football academy. So uh, there's Bishop post -grad. Sycamore. Staying in the news, and uh, now the most popular name. Post grad means you graduate yeah. in Yahoo my, fantasy my, football. My when I was a post high school graduate, I was a college student. Or if you're also if you're not a college student, then you're what's you called an adult. Yes, like those exactly. are the two things that you are. You're a you're an adult no matter what, but you're a you're a college student or you're not. I mean that's that's what you are post high school. Yeah, I saw this from Field Yates. Uh, he put out the, and this is no surprise, but the five schools with the most players on active NFL rosters as we start to get the season underway. Uh, you're not going to be surprised by any of these, but any guess about who is number one? Most players in the NFL currently. A Alabama? Yep, 53 players gives Alabama 53 current NFL players, dude. Think about that. That's a whole roster. Yeah. That's, that's a, a whole 53 roster. 53 freaking man roster. Yeah, that's amazing. And, like, three of them are starting quarterbacks. And, and I got to tell you, I don't know what Miami's tap number was or yeah. FSU in the day or Alabama or USC or Oklahoma, Texas. I don't know. I can't imagine it was ever near anything like half of that. Well, I mean, a whole portion of the league is – propped up by like yeah. five teams i mean here it is alabama's got 53 current nfl players that's the most ohio state number two they have 50 lsu has 46 good enough for third and then georgia and notre dame uh both have a quite a bit of a drop but still they both got tied so for miami fourth. still has 50 something Use i didn't mention said? miami oh, okay. at all who, who was second beside alabama them? ohio state, oh, ohio state. Okay. lsu okay. with 46 and then georgia and notre dame both have 35 current i'm gonna players try to go find out about 2006 or 7 or maybe even earlier how many miami hurricanes yeah we might have been in the nfl at one time that's that's for another day here's a, a, a small baylor note but the wnba unveiled its w25 uh, top 25 players as they celebrate uh, their 25 year history and of course there were a lot of familiar names sue bird diana Tro basically all the yukon players you know they're all like wnba hall of famers uh, but it was unveiled yesterday, and Baylor's Brittany Griner uh, was one of those W25, one of the top 25 players uh, in WNBA history. So congratulations to Brittany Griner, and maybe we'll see her around a little bit more than we saw her the last few years with uh, Nikki Collin, now the head coach. But uh, that's a cool honor. Good for her. Yeah, thought this was cool. So Fordham and Nebraska met on Saturday. How about them Huskers? 52-7, to seven, baby. God. Yeah. 
Yay. I mean, it's better than week no, one. No, I know it is. Yeah. Well, uh, linebacker Ryan Greenhagen, he plays for Fordham. He set an NCAA record on Saturday against Nebraska. He was credited with 30 tackles in the 52-7 to loss. And they reviewed the tape afterwards and actually found, oh, no, he actually had another tackle. He had 31 total tackles versus Nebraska. So what does that do? That breaks the NCAA Division I record for most tackles in a game with 31. But Fordham SID Joe Debari said that his 31st tackle was realized after another player, uh, actually after he admitted that another player had made the tackle. So instead of just, shh, I'm going to have this record of 31 tackles, he was actually the one to come forward and say, no, that was my teammate that did that. So they took away the tackle, ties the record. But uh, just a little bit of honesty mm -hmm. and, and, you know, good sportsmanship. And I think that's good karma, man. I think that pays off for you in the long run. But very selfless thing to do, even if it would have been found out later. But, shoot, still having 30 good tackles in a game, that's pretty incredible. Yep, good for him. So uh, kudos to Fordham linebacker. Ryan Greenhagen. Remember last year when the Broncos had like their whole quarterback room mm -hmm. out for a game? It was COVID protocols and all of that. Well, remember the Broncos got really upset and they were like, well, what about the this team and what about that team as far as when it came to, to COVID protocols? Um, and you know, remember Raven Steelers got delayed because there was a bunch of it, but they didn't delay when the Broncos had their entire quarterback room out. And we now know why. The reason why was because the NFL caught on to the fact that the Broncos quarterbacks were breaking protocols Protocol. yep. left and right uh you're always on camera folks you're always on camera and that includes at team facilities so john elway had been you know going back and forth uh he was looking for you know that game to be postponed at the time because hey they didn't have any quarterback but the league denied those requests because surveillance videos showed that denver's facility showed the quarterbacks tried to fool the system they removed their contact tracing devices and put them in the four corners of the meeting room then sat together to watch film that close contact made them immediately uneligible to play God. so just a silly thing but uh yeah that was why denver was without all of their quarterbacks last year and why the nfl said we're still not canceling the game you're gonna have to deal I, with it i wonder why when people do those things and that's probably an easy way to do it um that's also like if i was trying to to count my steps and just you know put my watch on the dog and like man you've got forty thousand steps today well yeah the dog has two more legs than I do. So, yeah. uh, but you'd have to put one on each leg. <laughs> no, just he's just gonna walk a lot more than I will. You know, he's gonna cut count oh, steps. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, okay. but I, I, I don't know. Like the lady who the lady that uh, got in a cab at the Boston Marathon, the New York yeah, Marathon. Yeah, no, that was a while back. Yeah, yeah and but like you think you're not getting caught? And, yeah, you, you, you broke the record by 11 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got found out, and that's why that happened. That's why you had a, a former wide receiver, uh, this Kendall Hinton, that came in and, and actually played in that game, recorded uh, pass completion, so good for him. Final couple stories here. Todd McShay is uh, going to be off of television for a little while. He's stepping away from ESPN for an unspecified amount of time, said he's going to take some time away to focus on health and family, and thanked ESPN for being so supportive and for their well wishes, said he can't wait to be back on the sideline soon. I don't know if you saw him this past weekend. He's that kind of incident here and there, but um, I don't know what's going on. He's either got something neurological or something that is uh, perhaps, you know, substance uh, related, but it, it's, it's cringe. It's really hard, really hard to watch him trying to talk. And it's not the first time. I mean, there's, there's various videos out there of the last couple of years of, of him struggling to speak for whatever reason. It hasn't been said that he's like getting treatment or anything, but he's clearly got something going on because he's, he's not, He's not all the way he should be, and so uh, he's going to be taken off of uh, off of ESPN for a while. And they had, you know, taken him off of uh, a game during the middle of a game last year, if you'll remember, because uh, it was just something was clearly wrong. So Todd McShay is stepping away uh, for a little while, and he did have COVID too. So some people have assumed that maybe like lasting effects from that or whatever. But this kind of goes back a couple yeah. years now at this point. Well, so I wish Todd McShay the best in dealing with whatever he's dealing with. Yeah, best of luck to you. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, I wanted to say this note. Baseball, we don't talk much baseball because, you know, with, with football going on, there's just so much. But have you all kept up with Joey Gallo since the Rangers traded him? A little bit. Not going great. Mm. I thought it would be perfect for him there. They sat him yesterday. Well, they're reason, sure doing pretty well. Yeah. Sat yeah. him yesterday, reason being he is hitting 130 and has struck out 61 times in 123 at-bats. Who did they think they were trading for? Because that sounds like Joey Gallo as a Ranger, quite frankly, although the batting average is a little bit lower than 
than it was with Texas. You know, some people cannot play in the Bronx. Randy Johnson couldn't do it. You know, it, yeah, it he a, was a Hall of Famer. Yeah. It is a tough, tough, tough place to play. I mean, it is a meat grinder of expectations. Look, and, and you have a lot of media in Dallas that cover the Rangers. You've mm-hmm. got two newspapers, and you've got you know radio stations and TV stations that are there. But do you walk into that media room after you go 0 for 4 with four strikeouts, or, or they come up to your locker after you strike out with a runner on third that would have won the game in the ninth, they ask you a lot harder questions. It is like being – like that's the most comparable thing to being a Cowboy. Yeah, no no doubt. Yeah, you can't have a couple bad nights, and then it's just like it's part of the deal. It's like, no, it's – yeah, it's, it's different with that New York media. So, yeah, he is basically struck out in half of his 123 at-bats since becoming a Yankee. So they sat him yesterday. We'll see if that kicks him into an extra gear, but – I uh, hadn't talked about him since he left, and I think the Rangers have done okay. Uh, so you know, they're not missing much. They're clearly not very good, but uh, we'll see what happens with Joey Gallo. So there are a few things that are off the radar. Bunch of stuff to get to. Thank you. And, and until Thursday, Craig's got a couple of wrestling notes. We've done this before. I gave him a couple of notes. Like, I even – saw something and sent it to him and it's a new network or whatever oh it's aw all out baby this past weekend it was off the freaking chain if you like wrestling at all then it was the best pay-per-view i've seen in 25 years cm punk or something like that cm punk was back daniel or excuse me brian danielson made his debut ruby soho oh Uh, lord uh, aw all out was thursday the Oh, it was awesome. It was freaking awesome. And I heard a lot of good responses from it just watching some of the Twitter time. Trained it for like two days. All right, we're going to talk to uh, James Krapia. He 